Just seen an Australian man killed in Lebanon where he was fighting for Hezbollah. You've called for parts of Lebanon to be designated a no-go zone to prevent more Australians going to fight with the terror group, which seems eminently sensible. Um, how's the government received your request? Has there been any response? Unfortunately, the only response we've had is a very dismissive one from the Health Minister, Mark Butler, who was sent out today to say that we've already given travel advice that people shouldn't go to Lebanon, therefore that's enough. Well, that's not enough because clearly people are still travelling to Lebanon. At least one Australian has been claimed by Hezbollah as a fighter and after he died had a full military funeral with all the Hezbollah honours. So it's very clearly a problem and I'm deeply concerned that there'll be more Australians who'll seek to go there. And this is a problem for us because those people will go, they'll fight, they'll become radicalised, they'll become skilled and some of them will try and come back to this country and threaten us here at home. And so we should prevent them from leaving in the first place. And the government's got an enormous range of tools to do so, one of the which is to declare an area of the world as a designated area within which, if you go, you are committing an offence because it's deemed that there's terrorist activity likely taking place there and you're likely to be participating in it. And you have to prove yourself that you're not engaging in terrorism. Now, the government has that tool available to them. They haven't taken it up. They haven't used it. But there are others as well. You can cancel people's passports. You can charge them for leaving the country to fight for a terrorist organisation. There's a range of tools available. But if they're not being used, then I'm worried that's sending the message to the community that there's no consequences for this behaviour. Yeah, for all their talk about, you know, security being our highest priority, this government seems to have a lot of other priorities, like The Voice and taking holidays. Speaking of this government's failures, and I'll speak more about this in a moment with security and defence expert Peter Jennings, but Iran has now sent a warship to the Red Sea. Now, they say the ship is there to secure shipping lanes and repel pirates, which is hilarious when you consider it's Iran-backed Houthi rebels doing the pirating. But the government in Australia really stuffed up by not agreeing to help the United States-led coalition by sending a warship, didn't they? I agree, James. I think the Ayatollah should appear before the next Melbourne Comedy Festival with lines like that. But you're also right that this is another weak decision on national security from the Albanese government. It's a pattern of behaviour from this government. They turn away from the tough calls. They refuse to back our allies. They refuse to back our friends. And they sit on the sidelines and they let others do the heavy lifting. And I think this is a shameful day in Australia's defence and national security policy. We could have made a tangible contribution to this UN-led coalition. We were asked to do so, but we've chosen not to do so. And I think that reflects terribly on the Prime Minister and his weak leadership. I suspect it's just because he fears what the domestic polit political implications would be of contributing to this. But Australia's interests are very clearly clear here. We want the international shipping through the Red Sea to be restored. We want it to be stable because we're a trading nation. We need the open trading system to get the commodities we need to make our economy function. Indeed. Senator James Patterson, thanks so much for your time tonight.